With that out of the way, thanks for sitting until the end of the video. I've been Paul. Oh crap, I've started at the end again. Uh, uh, welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul, aka the guy who's not backwards and coming forwards. And tomorrow, I'll make the Tenet video that you're watching right now. Since August, I've done a ton of videos on the movie, and I've compiled the most asked questions to clear up any confusion over the film. This includes why the future version of the protagonist shot at himself, what the algorithm is, why Cat didn't need a mask on the boat, and a lot, lot more. If this is your first time here, then please click the thumbs down button and make sure you unsubscribe from the channel to never see a video again. Without the way, cheers for clicking this, now let's get into the breakdown. Okay, so Tenet opens with an opera scene that pretty much throws you into the movie at the deep end. But what exactly is going on here? Well, on the surface, it seems like the protagonist is part of a CIA operation to infiltrate the opera during a siege so that he can secure the algorithm. This fails, and instead he's drafted into the Tenet organization after being double-crossed, having his teeth pulled out, and also choking down on what he believes is a cyanide pill. Sounds like my kind of night at the opera, but what exactly is going on here? Well, the protagonist was actually given the intel for this job by the future version of himself. This was so that he could not only ensure that he handed the algorithm over to Sator, but also make it so that he met Neil, and also showed he was willing to lay down his life. Just before the finale, we learn from Eves that the Splinter Team mission is meant to be one that no one returns from. Eves even says they can't afford having anyone left alive who knows what the algorithm is, and the fact that the protagonist takes this pill shows he's willing to lay down everything if the need calls for it. This obviously will heighten the trust that Eves has for him, and make sure that he picks him for the job at the end. Now why the future version made sure that Sato was able to collect the algorithm is hinted at by Priya, who refuses to change telling his past version about where it is. Do, do, do try and keep up. She says that they actually need Sator to bring all of the pieces together so that they can then snatch it and split it up. The entire point of the finale is to trick Sator into believing that his mission in burying the algorithm is successful so that his past version won't change anything. If he thinks he's going to win, the past Sator will continue collecting the pieces in order to bring them together and carry out the plan that will allow the algorithm to be stolen. This is why the Tenet team want the explosion to go off so that the past version of the character believes his future forces are successful. In the car chase, we saw how the antagonist learning the truth about certain events helped him to play them to his advantage, and thus his past version cannot know that he failed. In actuality, the Tenet team now have everything they need to divide up the algorithm and take it to their graves. But what is the algorithm exactly? Well, it's probably the plot point that we learn the least about, but from what we discover, we can piece certain things together. From Priya, we learn that the algorithm was developed in the future by a scientist that discovered a way to fully invert the world. This would allow things like global warming and climate change to be reversed, so that future generations would not suffer the sins of the past. The algorithm is pretty much a bomb that, when detonated, will cause a massive spike in reverse radiation across the planet that forces the past to fold in on itself, wiping out all life beyond the consciousness of the future. The people of the future believe that it is possible to change things in the past, whereas we learn throughout the film that simply isn't the case. However, because the people of the future always try to change things, they will always make the algorithm and attempt to send it back so we can see the events of the movie play out. The scientists that created it realized that in destroying the past, they would destroy themselves, and thus she separated the algorithm and buried it, which is where it was found by Sator. Upon believing that he's won, Sator says that someday in the future, a man in a tower will flip a switch, and Armageddon will be both created and avoided. Now the Armageddon he's referring to is creating it in the past in order to avoid it in the future. He believes that once the algorithm is planted and then detonated, that all life in the past will be completely wiped out. However, what the Tenet team do is basically along the same lines as the scientist, and they separate the algorithm, invert it, and place it somewhere so that it can never be found. By doing this, at no point in the future can these pieces of the algorithm be brought together, so therefore they can't be used. But who exactly is the scientist? Well, the movie tells us very, very little, but as we only ever meet one scientist, and they happen to be a female, I believe that this is the same person that becomes the Oppenheimer of her time. We learn that Laura has been studying the reverse radiation for quite some time, and that, though the people in the past haven't figured out how to do it, one day they will. 
I think that Laura is actually the person who'll discover the formula for inverting things, and the only time we meet her, she says that she was assigned to the project and has been studying it. This close proximity to time inverted objects makes her the perfect person to figure it all out, and though we'll never know for definite, movies tend to give us the answers even if they don't always point them out. Because this is the only person we meet who fits the role, I think it's the case, and if the shoe fits, wear it I guess. Also, I'm gonna, I was going to keep this video really tenet and actually give the answers before asking the questions, but I thought that would be too confusing. Anyway, just thought I'd add that in there. Now, this idea of everything being predetermined has put a lot of people off the movie and made them say, what's the point? Well, as Neil says before he goes to his death, they have faith in the laws of the universe and by carrying out things the way they're supposed to, it shows that there's actually a grand plan to it all. Tenet is a fatalist film and I'm sure many of us look back on bad things that happened to us and see they actually led to a positive outcome years down the line, which this film also seems to be hinting at. Now, though lots of people die along the way, that doesn't mean that Tenet doesn't have somewhat of a happy ending, and though we don't know if the protagonist goes off with Cat and Max at the end, I think the movie is hinting to us that he does. Before going away for the, <laughs> the last mission, <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying. Neil asks the protagonist, if he's gonna go back to London to check in on Kat, and the protagonist replies by saying no, it's far too dangerous. Neil then says, not even from afar, which the character also denies. However, we know from the finale that he did go back to London to check in on her from afar, so this was indeed a lie. Now we've already done a big breakdown on why we think that Neil is actually Kat's son Max, which will be linked at the end of the video, but I think Neil asked these two specific questions because he knows that the protagonist did indeed meet the pair after killing Priya. Speaking of Kat, there were several questions surrounding why they didn't just hang around at the turnstile after she was shot and then revert her there. However, we do know that before this moment, Sator's men owned it, so this would cause issues with the past had they hung around. They're only able to move then and there because Sator is out on the highway, so they have to travel back to the turnstile that they know will be accessible at the airport during their heist. I've also had a lot of people ask why Kat didn't need to wear a mask on the boat at the end. I'm never sure of exactly what boat they mean as she's on several in the finale, but if it's the Tenet one, it's because she's in a sealed room which has a regular supply of oxygen. A mask isn't needed at that point, and if they're talking about when she's on Sator's, it's because she's reverted back to normal at this point, so isn't feeling the effects of time inversion. Many of you wondered where Kat went after the boat scene at the end, and the simple answer is, she hid away whilst her past version continued on the same path that she did. All Kat would have to do is lie low until the inversion scene, in which that version of her goes to the past, and then she could pop out as there were no duplicates and continue living life like normal, aware that she succeeded and that her husband doesn't exist beyond this point. Outside of the airport, the characters are actually very good at avoiding themselves, and we even see that the protagonist passes the windmill that he was in at the start of the movie. He's well aware that his past self is hidden out of view, and knows that they won't come face to face even though they're very close. Now the next question is, why can't anyone understand what anyone is saying any time in the movie? Well that's because it was mixed during the pandemic on some iPhone headphones, and the score was so good that Nolan had them turn it up to 11. Ba based in the ride had the car going like... Nah but seriously, I have seen a lot of people asking why the protagonist shot at himself in the airport. The first time we see this fight, it seems like the attacker is trying to kill him, however, in hindsight we know that this is actually the future version of the character who is just trying to make it to the turnstile. The reason that he fires the gun at his past self isn't to kill him, it's actually to unload the entire thing so that it can't be used against him. From his POV, we can clearly see that he knows it won't hit his head, and thus he's deliberately missing on purpose. The past version even grabs it from him at the end of the fight, but rather than trying to snatch it back, he just dismantles it to make sure no matter what, he won't be shot. Speaking of turnstiles, a lot of people are confused about why people have to see themselves exiting before going into it. This is simply because if they know they got out the other side, then they will always get out, but I don't think it's completely imperative to their operation beyond simply knowing that things will be okay. Now most of the ops to do with the turnstiles are led by Eves, and many of you have been asking who exactly he is. We don't actually know, but we do know that he was hired by Tenet in order to basically be the cavalry for the protagonist at the turnstile 
and also be the person that leads the final op. Eves was clearly very close to the protagonist if he was picked to be someone who will guard the algorithm, but beyond that, we know very little. Now that is the main point of the movie, and it is said that the Tenet operatives should know very little about each other, which is why we don't actually learn who he is. I think that's all the major questions that I haven't cleared up in my previous videos, but obviously let me know below if you have any more. Don't forget that on the 30th of December we're giving away 3 copies of the Lord of the Rings 4K box set to our subscribers. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the movie. The links to our socials are in the description and you can also support the channel by clicking the join button and as a thank you, you get videos like this early. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of Neil's timeline in the film and also our 100 easter eggs video which will be linked on screen right now. They're some of our best work and the latter was featured in Men's Health magazine so definitely check them out after this. With that out of the way, thank you for sitting through the video, I've been Paul and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.